It's Boris's partying penalty. Uh, well, be, before I actually begin this segment, I'd like to um, to make a correction on my one of my previous segments mm. last week, and that is, of course, on James Lindsay. Um, I'd like he basically um, the. The, the 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 last part of the segment was basically me reacting against um, what I, I I believe that he called me a reactionary moron. That's what I and of course I, I I was um of course rather cross about that given that I'm not reactionary and to my knowledge not a moron though feel free to correct me if I am. <laughs> but I've, I've since found out that he wasn't referring to me he was referring to our McIntyre so it was a misunderstanding from the very beginning. Who's that guy? Uh, or one McIntyre is another thinker in the dark enlightenment circle who I think oh. got um, got cancelled or not cancelled but blocked by James on Twitter because he'd been quite persistent in his um, criticism of right. So what he he's thought doing. you were an acolyte of this guy. I think so. Yes, oh, okay. and wrongly. But we, we've we, we've since um, discussed this. Um, so you've spoken to him personally then? On what well, DM'd him on Twitter? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. So it's um, there was a ceasefire, if you like. <laughs> Excellent. Be. Can't be in place. But yes, with that correction made, let's move on to Boris Johnson being legally penalised for partying. Now, we've known for a long time mm-hmm. that, that number 10 is guilty of hosting various parties under lockdown. Obviously, mm-hmm. none of us would have had any issue with this whatsoever if we weren't under house arrest, but mm. there you go. So let's begin with a party gate rundown so we know where we are. Allegations about number 10 hosting Christmas parties in 2020 started as early as November last year. At this point, there was no evidence. So when asked at PMQs, Boris simply said, no, didn't happen. Uh, Then a week later, there was some evidence. A video of a, which is this uh, here, a video of a mock press conference featuring Angela Stratton, there she is, Downing Street's press secretary. This was, yeah, so this was leaked. The footage included a question about Number 10 being accused of hosting a Christmas party. This was involved in the mock conference, where she could be heard joking about there being no social resistancing. So you can see quite clearly that they're preparing for this accusation. Why would you do that unless you actually hosted a Christmas party or were thinking of hosting a Mm -hmm. Christmas party? Uh, At this point, it pretty much descended into clown world. Number 10 continued to claim that the parties didn't happen, despite evidence proving that they were preparing to be accused of it. (sighs) Yeah. So Boris later said that, um, oh, if it did happen, I I certainly didn't attend them. Due due to public pressure, they announced a public inquiry into the scandal. This was on the 8th of December. This is what we now know as the Sioux Grey Inquiries, if we get the next one up. Since the inquiry was announced, more photographs um, and testimonies Mm. emerged of these parties. One included a picture of Sean Bailey at Conservative HQ. Then a picture of Boris and Carrie, among others, as you can see over here, as a garden party emerged. And then after that, an email was leaked which showed number 10 um, to be proactively keeping all of this under wraps, which pretty much confirmed the the content they had for their own rules, Mm -hmm. and by extension, the taxpayer who were going along with it in the belief that this was all part of the greater good. Last but not least, there was this. What you can see is Boris Johnson dancing at a Christmas party. Granted, this is in 2013, so Mm -hmm. just just to be perfectly accurate, but this was, um, at the time, people believed this was genuinely him in dancing in COVID era whilst we were all under lockdown. Well, I think whether they actually believed that or not, the timing of the imagery itself (laughs) is very suggestive because obviously no one saw or recorded Boris actually partying properly by video like mm. this well, uh, well, during covid however if they were to imagine in their minds it would probably mm. look a lot like this or perhaps perhaps even worse mm. maybe who knows but, but believe it or not there is footage and there is photo- photographs or, or at least we know there are photographs because sue the, the sue gray inquiry has confirmed that evidence has been has been submitted they just mm-hmm. haven't re- released it to the public yep. um but yeah there we are but on, on the subject of covid Mm -hmm. and lockdowns uh i'm going to present a shill here uh the pfizer documents that they don't want you to see this is um this is a video of premium video by harry where he basically explains the pfizer documents that's the um information kleptocracy that we call the media doesn't want you to see it's very very spicy information kleptocracy Mm -hmm. is a very good word yes it's far too spicy for us to discuss here because we're of course on youtube but that is all the more reason to check it out. Pfizer's mm. dirty little secret, secret, please do it. But anyway, let's get back to Boris. Mm. So the Sue Gray report has since been finished, concluded, but not published um, to the anger of many, understandably so, to mm-hmm. be perfectly honest. However, some findings have been declared. Uh, the 16 events took place over a dozen dates between May 2020 and April 2021. Yep. They all took place at 10 Downing Street or the Cabinet Office, apart from one in the Department for Education. Two of three previously unreported events took place at number 10, with the other in the Cabinet Office. 
12 out of the 16 events have proceeded to be investigated by the police. I'm not sure why the other four haven't. Well, this thing as well, as people have pointed out, number 10 is not exactly short of policemen. These no. places are surrounded by policemen for the security of the mm. people doing it. But, you know, they, they must be very special policemen because they only they don't report crimes that go on right under their nose that they no. know are crimes. Mm. Uh, anyway, yeah. No, it's... um. Just, just makes my blood. They need to have bad, an to investigation honest. to say, oh yes, no, there was a party going mm. on literally behind, about six feet behind me on this time. I, I mean, the, the the depth of this scandal is is just so insulting, it's extraordinary. Yeah. But yeah, following this investigation that they held eventually, the Metropolitan Police claimed to have issued fifty penalty notices. So they said on Tuesday that they had made a further thirty referrals in addition to a previous. 20 for fixed penalty notices as part of the Operation Hillman into illegal gatherings at Downing Street and Whitehall as well. 10 Downing Street has said it will make public um, notices that have been issued. Mm -hmm. And of course, some of those have decided to come out and make it easier for themselves rather than to, of course, wait for their names to be dropped. So three of the 50 um, who have been issued with fixed penalty notices are Boris Johnson, his wife Carrie and Richie Sunak. Mm, interesting. Mm. Unsurprising, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. we, we we did after all see Boris and Carrie in that photo in the yeah. garden, so that that we we expected that. And well, Richie Sunak is after all his chancellor, mm -hmm. so very much in the so inner, the these inner circle. people got the fines because it was their venues that these parties were taking place in, and according to the rules of the fines, I it's the person so. organising the party, the shindig, yes, the mm. kerfuffle, who gets fined. Yeah. Would you like to know how large these fines are? Yeah, about a hundred pounds. Yeah, bearing in mind that, of course, if if you are a a politician, uh, how will Boris pay the gas how will, bill? This how month? will he pay the gas bill <laughs> <laughs> with with his infinite disposable income? Oh no, wait, because his gas bill's already paid for with the taxpayer, yeah, isn't that's it? Right, I believe so. Yeah, so yeah. On what grounds should we feel sorry for them? <laughs> yeah, well, this is the thing. Whenever the punishment for something is a fine, then it's put. Then the law is there to patrol the lower classes. Mm who actually have to worry about money rather than the upper classes yes. who don't. Mm. So, yeah, always bear that in mind. When the punishment is a fine, then it's a law for the lower classes, mm. not for the, the people yes. setting the rules. But to assure the public that he has learned his lesson, Boris has sought to offer a public apology. Shall we give this a lesson? Oh, must we? Let's, let's listen to the first bit. Today, I've received a fixed penalty notice from the Metropolitan Police relating to an event in Downing Street on the 19th of June 2020 and let me say immediately that I've paid the fine and I once again offer a full apology and in a spirit of openness and humility I want to be completely clear about what happened on that date. My day began shortly after 7am and I chaired eight meetings in number 10 including the Cabinet Committee deciding Covid strategy. I visited a school in Hemel Hempstead, which took me out of Downing Street for over four hours. And amongst all these engagements on a day that happened to be my birthday, there was a brief gathering in the cabinet room shortly after 2 p.m., lasting for less than 10 minutes, during which people I work with kindly passed on uh, their good wishes. And I have to say, in all frankness, at that time, it did not occur to me uh, that this might have been a breach of the rules. So it was only 10 minutes, was it, Boris? Yes. Mm. I mean, how insincere does that look? Mm. Mm. I mean, he's... To actually be, like, so unsubtly reading a script like that, Yeah, yeah. it doesn't... I mean, that that's really bad. It's a good performance, I thought. It could, if, it he's trying to, if he's trying to make a mockery of an apology, it's a fantastic performance. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But there we are. He confirms he received the notice and he's paid the fine. Mm -hmm. And in the spirit, I'm quoting him, in the spirit of openness and humanity, he said on the day, it was on the day of my birth. In other mm -hmm. words, give me a break, please. Yeah. After visiting a school in Hemel Hempstead, well, good for you, Boris. Um, I was doing all of this work. Yeah, there you. was a brief gathering for about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And if we, well, there was some information on this brief gathering, apparently. And to, uh, and. Yes, because mm -hmm. it is believed that there exists a photograph of Boris standing next to Richie Sunak and toasting the camera with a beer in his hand. If we actually scroll down a little bit, there is a picture here. 
you see that's obviously that's not a real picture but this is obviously an artist's interpretation of what is believed to yeah, have of what has very been described obviously photoshop what is being described in the sue gray report so sue mm -hmm. gray gave this as evidence not this particular picture but the picture as evidence to the police but the picture itself has so far not been released whether mm -hmm. it will ever be released we of course don't know but anyway he said that it did not occur to him at the time that this would be a breach of the rules despite the fact that if we move on to the next very quickly he told the in entire country to stay at home well, he was at home when he was partying. To oh, prepare. yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, so he's forgiven. Mm. No, I know what you mean. Yes, I mean, if my, yeah. home, if my home was an IB for nightclub, then, oh, well, yeah, no harm done at all. Absolutely no, <laughs> abs there's absolutely no way this would be um, insulting to anyone, you know, yeah. being estranged from their, gra from their grandparents at Christmas. No, absolutely. I think the real crime here is the restrictions to start with. Mm. Um, the fact that the government themselves setting the rules essentially never took them seriously is yeah. just the cherry on top. It, but the real offence is the fact that not only did the government assume to itself the powers to lock everyone in their homes, um, but also most people went along with it because yeah. they were worried and scared due to, again, government fear messaging about the pandemic itself. Yes, exactly. But all There are so many things that are wrong here before you get to the party and so on. Mm. Um, all that does is underline the hypocrisy and the outrageousness of the powers which government uh, has, has taken onto itself. And no yes. one is really reporting about that. Like no. The media were fully in favour of that, if you recall, and oh, yeah. still are. Um, there's nothing about our mainstream media that sort of stops and wonders, actually, should the government have the power to lock us up? No, they were all in favour no. of it. No. And they got special exemptions, as you well recall, because no, they, they were essential businesses. And they did they did extreme, they, they committed, to, well, did a lot of hard work to try and to ensure that those who believe perhaps we, we, we should maybe resist this a little mm -hmm. bit on the grounds of, I don't know. Were denigrated as yes. anti-vaxxers and so on and so forth, and were mm. dealt with very harshly by the police when they did try to muster mm. protests and things like that. Not like extreme Extinction Rebellion, yeah. you might think. Uh, no. Like, that is the real crime here. And let's not forget as well that the media, for whatever reason, is doing very well mm. at the moment. And maybe it's got something to do with the unprecedented I mean, amount of public money be it's by which the government has bought yeah. out the media via, um, via ads and campaigns yeah. about coronavirus safety and so on. Yeah. Well, what does it say about the attitude of the Met Police? as well mm -hmm. given that this was literally happening in front of them as you rightly said you compare that with how they responded to the lockdown protests that we had towards the end of last year where people yeah. were basically being assaulted in the streets for uttering the, the slightest police. part yeah. of dissent by the police it's scandalous mm, absolutely so. scandalous um, but, but we have to remember that the important thing about this whole thing is not really about the party no right it's about the context of the party and all of the discussion you find is going to slowly sort of shift the narrative to over all who had what drink at what mm. time in what place at what party that's not the important issue here the important thing is the civil liberties of the entire country being trampled on by by the government, mm. but also with the complicity of the media, which is now asking you yes. to trust it as it criticizes And the fact that they government. didn't even, they clearly did not believe in their own policies in the first place. It's raised the question, why on earth were you doing it? Is there perhaps not a motive beyond protecting people from, people from COVID at here that, that drove that policy? Right. Absolutely. And that's what has to be asked until the end of time, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. But anyway, shall we listen to the second half of, the, of, of Boris's Let's apology? It. Let's do it. But of course, the police have found otherwise, and I fully respect the outcome of their investigation. I understand the anger that many will feel that I myself fell short when it came to observing the very rules which the government I lead had introduced to protect the public. And I accept in all sincerity that people had the right to expect better. So it's basically, oops, I got caught. Mm. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. So like, I attempted to, of course, to gaslight the public that I had done ultimately nothing wrong in the hope that this would somehow dissolve. The yep. police found otherwise, and I respect I respect the outcome of their investigation, so oops, yeah. in effect. Yeah. It doesn't get more embarrassing than that, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. He understand, He said he understands why people are angry about the fact that the government he leads lets people down. That's a very, very su subtle way of distinguishing his responsibility yeah. as Prime Minister from the actions of the government. That's true, but it's also, I think, sadly true that uh, the Prime Minister in this country has less, uh, less direction over the country than you might think. Oh, yes. It seems like civil servants, ministers, lobbyists, and mm. cronies seem to decide the, yeah, but there's the, the direction of the country. Yeah, but in, the, the in this minister. case, there's absolutely no sign that he was a dissident to the attitude of number not, 10. No, no. no. 
But yeah, he's just trying to transmit the idea that he only had partial knowledge of what was going on, but has been caught out red-handed. So mm-hmm. we know that everything he's saying is pretty much nonsense. Mm. The big question, of course, is should Boris resign because of this? He has, at least to my knowledge, broken the law. Has he not? Um, I'm not a lawyer. Well, if that's the ca- if it's the case, then there is some dispute over this. But if, if it's true that he has, he's the first he's prime minister to do so the in the history. Rules. Mm. And there, but there was a lot of criticism in the first place for the government calling its coronavirus yeah. guidelines rules, because rules is neither guidelines nor uh, laws. If they yeah. are laws, then you cannot break them because that would be criminal. But mm. a lot of them were never actually laws. No. They were just perceived to be laws, most importantly by the public, but also by the police who enforced them as if they were laws. Mm. And in parts of the country, a lot of the fixed penalty notices which were issued over COVID were subsequently rescinded or even refunded mm. simply because there was no actual legal basis to them. Mm. So, that's so a- there is a grey area mm. there, to my mind, but the precise regulations were yeah no, no no one was actually criminally charged by dissenting against the rules so may, maybe he's going to get away with this anyway Keir Starmer obviously um thinks that both Richie Shu- Rich- Rishi Sunak I keep, I keep calling him Richie Sunak Rishi Sunak and Boris <laughs> Richie Sunak is a bit of a Freudian slip <laughs> yes though, isn't it? yes yeah. it is he thinks both of them should resign obviously um Starmer said that the prime minister and the chancellor had broken the law again we don't know this is the case yet um, he said he repeatedly lied to the British public, what well, he's true there, and insisted that they must both resign. He then added that the Conservatives are totally unfit to govern, Britain deserves better. And the leader of the Liberal Democrats, Ed Davey and Nicola Sturgeon, have both said pretty much exactly the same thing. So the opposition says that the government should resign. Yes. What a shock. Yes, indeed. But you know what's even more shocking? Mm-hmm. Uh, this picture here. Um, if we get it up quickly, yes, which is, of course, Keir Starmer having a pint indoors, which I oh, believe at dear. the time that this was taken mm-hmm. was prohibited. Oh, no. Yeah, so maybe you should resign as well, Mr. Starmer. <laughs> mm. Yes, but someone else who thought um, they would weigh in is the now independent MP, mm-hmm. Claudia Webb. All right. This is what Claudia Webb had to say. The Prime Minister and the Chancellor broke the law. Police initially failed to investigate, but later did so, issuing a fine to each during Parliament's recess. The PM apologised, saying he didn't realise he broke the law he created. No one has yet resigned. You're now up to date. So just to recap, Mm. this is the Member of Parliament who was issued a suspended sentence for threatening to throw acid on a potential love rival and has refused to resign to this day despite being found guilty. Wait, what? Yeah, well, not she's not actually throwing acid, but threatening. She to, was threatening to an acid attack. Yes, I believe so. Crikey. Yes, and she she had to resign from the Labour Party, but she's still an MP, um, an independent, an independent member of Parliament. So yes, Claudia, perhaps you should take um, I mean, Davis' advice and sit out on this one. If Boris Johnson had been plotting an acid attack, I think that would probably be bigger news than holding a party. <laughs> oh, just a little bit. God, that would be bigger news than Ukraine, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of chemical weapons, anyway. Oof. But Another person who should probably sit this one out is is David Lammy. Who he says, should usually sit most things out. In, in fact, by the size indeed. of him, he spends most of his time sitting on something. So there we go. <laughs> he says, the British public were banned from visiting dying relatives, forced to miss funerals and weddings. Mm-hmm. All, all the while, Boris Johnson was hosting illegal parties at number 10. The Prime Minister is taking the public for fools. He must must resign. Well, at this point about missing funerals mm. isn't exactly true because funerals, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, were permitted but limited for, to 30 people. Yes, but that's going to mean that some people who would otherwise have attended the funerals were forced to miss them because they weren't in that. Yes, day. that's very true. And it's, and, and it's still um, an atrocity. Don't, mm. get, don't get me wrong. Um, but, but However, the mm-hmm. reason why I've brought this up mm. is because if we get the next one here, we can see to hear Ali, another MP, uh, in April, who attended a funeral himself, mm-hmm. only that was found there weren't 30 people in attendance here, mm-hmm. there were 100 people in attendance. Yeah, but I think you forget that the rules only apply to the... They do not apply to Tahir Ali and his segment of the population, fundamentally. Oh, why they, would that they, be? They always do what they want and no, everyone turns a blind eye when it comes okay, to so things Okay, like so, so, so the crime is, es- is essentially where you politically ally insofar as other things are concerned. It's whether, whether the you police have the, cares whether you break the law or not. Yeah. Yes, quite. And of course, this isn't quite, the, it isn't quite the same as having a party, I accept, but hypocrisy is hypocrisy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the police were there again as well. They just sat back and let it happen. Imagine my yes, again, shock. Con- again, contrast that attitude with how they treated the anti-vaxxers outside who were mm-hmm. protesting outside Whitehall, I believe, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Was it Whitehall? Yeah, and well, there are other reasons... Why as well? Maybe if you're if you're to dive deeper into this and think about how they treat 
shall we say, some preachers at Speaker's Corner for what they can and can't say and leave others to do as they wish. Mm -hmm. I, I will not go into no, that I've heard too much plenty more. of anecdotal evidence of the police turning, turning a blind eye to fundamentally Muslim minorities in British mm. towns, uh, breaking lockdown rules and many other rules, mm. um, whereas they police almost everyone else. Mm. And fundamentally, the reason they turn a blind eye is because they don't want to uh, damage the racial peace. Mm. So there we go. That's modern Britain. Yes. Uh, speaking of um, of modern Britain, uh, Owen Jones had something interesting to say mm -hmm. on Britain. Britain removed both of its prime ministers in World War One and World War Two, when the country was actually at war and in a big way. So nice try, Daily Mail. He's referring to, the, to this article. Mm -hmm. Um, from the, da the Daily Mail. If we scroll down a little bit here, yeah, there we are. So the Daily Mail are quite clearly saying, why did, why on earth does this matter at the moment when what's going on in Ukraine is currently, right. of course, mm -hmm. underway, still unfolding as a crisis? And Owen's saying that this is an absolutely pathetic attempt to defend the Prime Minister, mm. given that in the previous two world wars, of course, there were prime ministerial changes. But I'm going to say that what, whilst I think that this is a fair point that Owen makes, I would say he's actually still still incorrect because mm. I'm, as, as much as i'm not well for start we're not in a world war yet mm. i don't i don't think i don't think boris but also we're not at war no we're not not officially mm. we're involved in a war but we're not at war and i don't i don't think that boris was for someone who is of course the, the entire establishment is of course pro-ukraine peddling peddling the dogmatic pro-ukraine line without any nuance really at all but Insofar as how he's managed this, I don't. I think that there are far worse people who could be in charge than Boris. And given that Owen is very much part of the camp that's trying to prevent a world war from breaking out, I think this is a, he's tripping on his own shoelaces a little bit here right. by suggesting that a better person could actually fill Boris's boots at this point. Well, who's that person going to be fundamentally? I dread to think. Mm. Please not lose trust. But you know what, what, what will happen? We'll probably get a general election. And yeah. God knows what could come from that. Well, there's just no one in Parliament that fills me with any confidence whatsoever. No. Um, and it seems to me that all of the power is actually held outside of whatever the elected representatives mm. are doing. So they're just like a formalised scapegoat. Again, with a lot of these parties, civil servants are present. Civil servants are very influential in shaping the agenda mm. of what this country actually does with your money. And uh, and yet no one actually reports on them. They actually airbrush their faces out or blur them out a lot of the time because, oh, the public doesn't care about that. The public wants oh, no. to know about the politicians. And so it seems to me like the politicians are kind of a ritualized scapegoat for everyone to hurl abuse and insults at. Mm. Whereas as a parade after parade of incompetence rolls through their ministerial seats. And yet they seem rather irrelevant in the long term to what this country actually does. They do. And that's, that's probably why all of the Conservatives that have the best, or shall we say the most honourably Conservative ideas, have absolutely no chance whatsoever of ever mounting a serious leadership challenge. Yeah. Oh, uh, God, that's depressing, isn't it? Mm. But anyway, I'm going to conclude. So in mm -hmm. any political scenario, I think it would be, it would any other political scenario, rather, it would probably be right for Boris to resign, mm -hmm. but not now. He should have resigned when, um, when in effect, he was proven to have been dishonest and lied to the British yeah, public. So. Lockdown restrictions of the kind that the government imposed were an awful idea from the start, as everyone, I'm sure our viewers will agree. Mm. No one would care in the slightest about number 10 being a, a secret IB for nightclub, had they not kept us all under house arrest. Yeah. So in principle... It would have been hilarious, yeah. probably, yeah. without the context of COVID restrictions, oh, it to would. find that uh, yeah. politicians were boozing it up, provided yeah. they were paying with... Uh, mm paying for it yeah. with their own funds of course uh, i mean on principle i still hope that the findings of the gray inquiry are, are fully published for this for the sake of uh, transparency of information of but i doubt that's going to happen thank you for watching and if you appreciated that segment from the podcast lotus eaters you can support us and find more content at lotuseaters.com for instance this new article from josh firm the unknowability of the global elite and if you would like to find more from him and follow him you can find him on getter at josh underscore firm. Thank you and goodbye.